Quetzalcoatlus is perhaps the most famous and awe-inspiring of the flying reptiles known as pterosaurs. With a wingspan of up to 36 feet, it was the largest flying animal to ever exist. In many ways, Quetzalcoatlus was exceptional compared to most other pterosaurs and flying predators. While large pterosaurs were present throughout much of the Mesozoic era, very few even approached the same size as Quetzalcoatlus. This has led many to wonder, what unique adaptations and circumstances allowed Quetzalcoatlus to evolve such a massive size? How is it able to overcome the challenges that normally limit the size of flying predators? And why didn't pterosaurs of such gigantic proportions exist during other periods of prehistory? This video will delve into the fascinating science behind these questions to uncover how Quetzalcoatlus was able to become one of the largest flying animals of all time. To understand how Quetzalcoatlus was able to grow so large, we must first examine the factors that typically constrain the size of flying predators. One of the primary challenges is the immense energy required for flight, which increases exponentially with body size. Larger flyers have to expend far more energy than smaller ones to generate the lift needed to stay aloft. This energy demand is compounded by the fact that larger predators also need more prey to sustain themselves. As a result, large flying predators are usually much rarer than their smaller counterparts, as the environment can only support a limited number of them. Another issue is that the strength of an animal's muscles and bones does not increase at the same rate as its body mass. This puts a physical limit on how large a flying creature can get before the weight becomes too much for its wings to support. The largest flying birds today, like the wandering albatross and the Andean condor, seem to be pushing up against this size limit. However, the pterosaurs of the Mesozoic era, including Quetzalcoatlus, were able to circumvent these constraints to a degree. Pterosaurs had a number of adaptations that enabled them to grow much larger than modern birds, such as hollow, air-filled bones that reduced their overall weight without sacrificing strength. They also had a unique respiratory system that was more efficient than that of birds, helping to power their flight muscles. Yet, even with these adaptations, most pterosaurs were still relatively small, with wingspans of less than 6 feet. So what allowed Quetzalcoatlus to take pterosaur size to the extreme? The most crucial key factor that enabled Quetzalcoatlus to reach such an enormous size was its mastery of soaring. Like modern birds such as condors and albatrosses, Quetzalcoatlus could ride rising air currents with its wings held out stiffly, allowing it to stay aloft for long periods without flapping. This soaring behavior greatly reduced the energy costs of flight, as Quetzalcoatlus didn't have to constantly work its flight muscles to generate lift. The efficiency of Quetzalcoatlus soaring was further enhanced by its body shape. It had a long neck, long wings, and a relatively short body, proportions that are ideal for soaring. The long, narrow wings gave Quetzalcoatlus a high aspect ratio, meaning they generated a lot of lift with relatively little drag. The long neck likely helped with balance and stability during flight. These adaptations are convergent with those seen in modern soaring birds, showing that Quetzalcoatlus was exquisitely specialized for riding the air currents with minimal energy expenditure. By soaring so efficiently, Quetzalcoatlus could search vast areas for food while expending very little energy in the process. This foraging strategy helped compensate for the relative scarcity of large prey in its environment, whereas a large, active flying predator might quickly burn through its energy reserves if it had to flap continuously in search of widely dispersed prey. Quetzalcoatlus could soar for hours with minimal effort greatly increasing its chances of encountering suitable prey. While soaring allowed Quetzalcoatlus to cover a lot of ground in search of prey, that didn't mean it was limited to only hunting from the air. There is compelling evidence that Quetzalcoatlus was also capable of terrestrial foraging, that is, walking around on the ground in search of food. Like all pterosaurs, Quetzalcoatlus had a quadrupedal stance, with its wings folding up when not in use. This allowed it to walk on all fours, using its powerful hind legs for locomotion and its smaller front limbs for support and balance. So what sort of prey might Quetzalcoatlus have hunted on the ground? While it probably wasn't taking down large dinosaurs, there would have been an abundance of smaller animals in its environment that could have served as suitable prey. 
This could have included juvenile dinosaurs, lizards, mammals, and perhaps even eggs or hatchling dinosaurs if it could find them. Quetzalcoatlus had a long, toothless beak that would have been well-suited for grabbing and subduing small prey. By supplementing its diet with terrestrial foraging, Quetzalcoatlus had access to a broader range of potential prey compared to pterosaurs that could only hunt while flying. This flexibility in feeding strategies would have made it easier to find enough food to sustain its large body size. It's a great example of how behavioral adaptations, not just physical ones, can play a crucial role in enabling animals to push the boundaries of size. Another factor that likely contributed to Quetzalcoatlus's gigantism was the lack of competition from similarly sized flying predators in its environment. During the late Cretaceous period when Quetzalcoatlus lived, there were no other pterosaurs or birds that even came close to rivaling it in size. Quetzalcoatlus seems to have had the large aerial predator niche all to itself. This is a notable contrast to earlier periods in the Mesozoic era, when multiple species of large pterosaurs often coexisted in the same environments. For example, during the late Jurassic, giant pterosaurs like Pteranodon and Hatsagopteryx shared the skies. These pterosaurs likely competed with each other for prey, which could have limited their ability to evolve even larger body sizes. But by the late Cretaceous, most of these other large pterosaur lineages had disappeared. This left Quetzalcoatlus as the sole occupant of the Megaflyer niche. Without competition from other large aerial predators, Quetzalcoatlus could exploit prey resources without interference and evolve to a size that might not have been possible if it had to share the skies with rivals. The lack of competing large pterosaurs in Quetzalcoatlus's time may have been due to a broader decline in pterosaur diversity during the late Cretaceous. Many pterosaur groups that had thrived earlier in the Mesozoic were disappearing, likely due to changing environmental conditions. The exact causes of this pterosaur decline are still debated, but it's thought that factors like climate change, fluctuating sea levels, and shifts in vegetation patterns may have played a role. These environmental changes could have disrupted the food webs that pterosaurs depended on, leading to extinctions. However, Quetzalcoatlus seems to have been an exception to this trend. As one of the last and most specialized pterosaurs, it managed to thrive at a time when its relatives were struggling. This may have been due to its unique adaptations, such as its highly efficient soaring flight and flexible foraging strategies, which made it more resilient to environmental upheavals. In essence, Quetzalcoatlus was the last of the pterosaur giants, a final, spectacular example of how large these flying reptiles could grow under the right circumstances. Its reign as the largest flying animal of all time was cut short by the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event, the same asteroid impact that wiped out the non-avian dinosaurs. But for a brief time, Quetzalcoatlus ruled the skies, a testament to the incredible evolutionary experimentation that characterized the Mesozoic era. The gigantic size was made possible by a combination of anatomical adaptations, ecological opportunities, and evolutionary good fortune. Its supremely efficient soaring capabilities reduce the energy costs that normally limit the size of flying animals. Its ability to forage on the ground broadened its prey options and made it easier to find enough food to sustain its bulk. The disappearance of competing large pterosaurs opened up the Mega Flyer niche for Quetzalcoatlus to fill, and its specialized adaptations allowed it to survive and thrive in the changing world of the late Cretaceous, even as other pterosaurs were dying out. Thank you for joining me on this journey into the world of the largest flying animal of all time. I hope you've enjoyed learning about the remarkable Quetzalcoatlus, and that this video has given you a new appreciation for the wonders of the prehistoric world. If you like this content, please remember to hit the like button and subscribe. And as always, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep marveling at the incredible story of life on Earth.